All right, folks, welcome back to Duty's Daggers. That is the channel that you're watching right now. I got a little bit of a knife overview for you guys, uh, and it's Jake Hoback knife. This is the first time I've ever checked out one of his knives, and I don't know a whole lot about him or his knives, but um, let's take a look. This is a really interesting knife. So let's get into it. First, please subscribe to the channel. Look down below, make sure that you are subscribed if you're not sure, and uh, follow me on Instagram too, Duty's underscore daggers. So, Jake Hoback. Don't know a whole lot about him. I know that he is a custom knife maker, makes knives here in the U.S., um, but apparently he has some made overseas as well because this one here says made in China from domestic and imported parts. So, this is a Chinese-made uh, Hoback. Not sure what the OEM is, um, but you see here that it's called the One Sam. Weird name. Uh, 20 CV blade steel. Titanium handle, 3.8 ounces. Blade length, 3.25. Overall, 7.5. There you go. Let's check it out. Pretty nice um, uh, wooden box here. Set that aside. And here's the One Sam. Interesting design. It's a titanium frame lock with a front flipper and a regular flipper. You can see the pivot on this side is a captive pivot, meaning it can't spin. And the way they did that is just making it a weird shape, not a round thing in a round hole that can spin. It's just a weird shape, so it doesn't spin. I'm assuming that's the reason they did that. Or just for fun, I'm not sure. Um, let's check the blade out. Pretty cool, man. I like this big fat swedge up here. Uh, I guess you'd call that probably uh, some kind of drop point, I guess. Um, I think it's a pretty cool looking knife. Um, definitely something a little off the beaten path as far as like typical knife designs go. It's a smaller knife for sure. I can get a full grip on it, but if you have much bigger hands than I do, you probably won't be able to. Um, let's do a couple size comparisons to help you get an idea of how big it is. Let's throw up the Chris Reeve Large Sebenza. And let's put up a Spyderco Native 5. It's more along that range of sizes. How about a PM2? How about a Vasti Nightshade? And... Let's do a cubit. Right around cubit size. So there you go. That is the size we're dealing with here. Looks like we have a... Is that a bead blast or a stone wash? It says stone wash. Uh, it's a very light stone washing, though. I don't really see, like... Very many little tumble marks. Um, same with the handle. It is stone washed titanium. On the handle, I see a little bit more tumbling marks. Just barely. So we got a, a, a long, big titanium backspacer. And that uh, forms part of the lanyard hole there. Lanyard loop. Thamabob. Reversible pocket clip. Almost like a hinderer style pocket clip. Like a kind of a shrunken down hinderer pocket clip. We have the little axe logo cut out of it. I think that's kind of cool. It's a small clip, which I like. I just wish it was higher up here. Um, you're going to have a pretty good amount of the knife sticking out of your pocket. About like that much. Um, now, the interesting thing about this knife is it's got something I've never, ever seen on a knife before. And that is a adjustable detent. Really, really interesting. Um, I've never really thought about having an adjustable detent on a knife. It never even crossed my mind that it could be a possibility or even, you know, would it, whatever it could possibly could exist. Um, it's kind of a cool idea. Um, you know, uh, you know, part of me says, well, if the detent's good from the beginning, why would you need to adjust it? And yes, that is very true. Um, but some people prefer lighter detents. Some people prefer stiffer detents. So I suppose that really is the 
the benefit here of having it be adjustable. Now the way you adjust it is that little set screw right there. So you can see we have um, this screw right there, which is um, holding in the steel lock bar insert, I believe, is it? Yes, it is. Um, and then the detent ball is actually right on the other side of that set screw. So when we turn this set screw, it's gonna apply pressure to the detent ball, pushing it farther out. Or if we screw this out, it's going to relieve pressure on the detent ball, pushing it, pulling it back in this way. I'm assuming there's a spring in there that's allowing it to push and pull um, with the turn of this set screw. So let's try it out. Right now it's set to kind of a medium strength, pretty good for the front flipper, a little even stiff for the regular flipper. I kind of slide off a little bit. Um, and um, speaking of the, the flipper, this is not a very comfortable flipper. It's very minimal and small, and it's a little sharp. Um, now, if we tune back the detent so that it's lighter, uh, it might be better on my fingers. So let's kind of mess with it. It's a T6. Or sorry, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, T6. So let's turn it out a few times. I want to be careful not to turn it out all the way because I don't know what happens then. So that's much lighter. See, I can easily fail it, but it's easier on my finger. Give it a little bit of gusto pops out just fine. That's probably where I would leave it if I was doing, you know, if, if I wanted the flipper to be my, my primary deployment. It's fine for the front flipper too, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the lighter side, but it doesn't hurt my finger. Um, now if we turn it up, let's dial this in a couple turns. Oh, it's a little more snappy now. Front flipper still feels pretty good. Let's do it and live a little bit more. No, nope, that's still still feels pretty good. Let's go a little further. Okay, now it feels a little strong. Yeah, see, I'm just I'm slipping off that. That hurts. Even a little strong for the front flipper now. Yeah, I would dial it back a little bit. So let's dial it back. Ouch. Yeah, that's still a little strong. I really don't like that flipper tab. It hurts. <laughs> there we go. That's pretty good. There we go. So that's kind of how it works. It's kind of cool, right? Um, you know, uh, it has two means of deployment, so you can tune it to be perfect for the front flipper or for the uh, regular flipper. If you're a strong detent guy, you dial it up. If you're a weaker detent guy or gal, or whatever, you dial it down. Um, now, speaking of the action, it's not really that great. Um, you hear that sound? That's a sound I don't like to hear um, because that usually means the detent ball is kind of rubbing on the stone washing maybe um, on the on the path in there where the pivot uh, where the or sorry where the detent ball rubs on on the tang that's usually what that is I've had that I've experienced that before on cheaper frame locks what I've done in the past is taken it apart and polished the detent ball track where it rides and that really helps with the problem. Um, I had that same sound happening on my uh, Kubi Tidious here, frame lock. Um, I polished that track in there. It still makes it a little bit, but it is much, much smoother. You can tell. Here's the Hoback. Here's the Kubi. So it's helped a lot. If this, if I owned this knife, that's what I would do. I would take it apart and polish that area. Um, I don't know. It, you know, the front flipper is not super satisfying to do, to to actuate. It's fine. It works okay. Um, you can do the side finger. 
Can I do the over the top? Yep. Um, I, I prefer the front flipper over the, the flipper tab. This is just not, not good for me. Um, you have to really kind of make sure your finger's in the right spot because if you don't, you're going to kind of slip off of it and it kind of wrenches on your finger and, and uh, hurts a little bit. Can I do a reverse flick from... No, I can't really. Um, so action is not great. Um, and obviously, you know, tuning this detent ball in or out is going to affect how the blade falls shut. If there's less pressure on the detent ball, there's less pressure, um, you know, pushing in on the blade, uh, allowing it to fall easier. So let's dial it back and just see. Yeah, oops. And then let's dial it back in. Yeah, see, much stiffer. So that's adjustable as well. Um, let's take it back out. Uh, another thing is, depending on how you're holding this knife when you go to do the front flipper, um, this flipper kind of hits your hand back here. It doesn't like pinch it or anything, but you can feel it um, kind of grazing your your finger a little bit. It's just, it's not a very satisfying knife to deploy by either the front flipper or regular flipper. It's not, it doesn't feel great. It feels all right, um, but not great. Um, the centering is pretty spot on. I imagine messing with this will, might affect the centering. Let's see, it is off to the right a tad. Eh, it doesn't seem to really affect it. Yeah, not really. So all in all, um, interesting concept. I think that's really cool. Um, I always like to see new and interesting ideas implemented in pocket knives. Um, I wish the deployment was more satisfying and smooth. Um, this mechanism on a, maybe a different kind of knife or something like that, I would be really interested in seeing. Um, but this knife design um, is really not for me. I think it looks interesting, you know. Um, ergonomically, it's not bad at all. Um, I feel the clip a little bit, but I don't feel it poking me, at least just holding it and gripping it right now. I don't... Um, the blade is relatively thin behind the edge, relatively thin blade stock. This fat swedge will help with slicing. The sharpening choil is pretty decent. Um, you can see a pretty distinct line right there where the plunge grind starts to slope up and get thick. And then you can see where our um, edge termination is way uh, right up here in front of it. So that's good. You have this amount of life in the edge for sharpening right in here. That's fine. Um, the knife gets a little skinny towards the back, giving you kind of like that slip off -y sort of feeling when you're gripping the knife. I usually don't like that. Um, it just makes you feel like, I mean, you're not really going to slide off if you're gripping the knife, but it's kind of like that not super secure locked in feeling when you're gripping the knife. Um, all that being said, um, this is an expensive knife too. I don't know exactly how much, but I remember when I saw the price, I thought, yeah, no way. <laughs> so I'll put a link down below. You can go take a look for yourself. Um, this is not something I would buy. Um, but if it's your thing and you want to check out an adjustable detent um, and you want to spend the money, maybe it is your thing. That's fine. Um, I'll have to look and see um, if he is using this kind of mechanism on any of his, any of his other designs because maybe one of those would be more my jam. So that's about it. Thanks for watching, folks. Just a quick overview for you. Actually, not even that quick for 15 minutes, but anyways. Um, I might try doing uh, kind of shorter videos. I'm not, I still can't really decide if like longer videos are better for my channel or having them nice and quick. I don't know. People usually say faster videos are better because uh, it keeps people attention. People's attention keeps them watching through the whole thing. Um, I don't know. Anyways, I'm rambling now. Let's end the video, folks. Thanks for watching. Like the video before you head out. I'd appreciate it very much, and I will see you soon.
nada Mary, adiós.